Welcome back, everybody. Do you mind if I share the news or whatever? No, if you like private, that's cool. Yeah, whatever. Daniel's know. getting married, y'all. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> uh, Daniel put his uh, his uh, his LinkedIn profile up like Monday night. Is that right? Yeah. Monday night. I guess like he had nothing else to do. He'd finished everything he needs to do for all of his classes and like he'd watched all the old Love Boat episodes and he's like, I don't have anything else to do. I'll just make a LinkedIn profile. And uh, and then the next morning he had an email from Google. What did the email say? Uh, they liked my GitHub repo and that it was rare to see people from a Go experience and uh, offering me offering to or asking me to send them my resume. Wow, that's so awesome. I'm so glad that you got involved with Go. And then they also yeah. mentioned that, uh, hey, they the, like that the you've the been involved with GDG, right? Yeah. That's cool, man. Congratulations. So uh, what we're learning, the, the point of that story is one, just like to be excited for Daniel. Totally scored, right? And then the other one is, uh, is just to share, hey, what we're learning, there's industry demand for it. And it's that thing that I shared in the spring. Like, if you want to be successful, get in front of what's coming and let it hit you. And... Uh, and so, yeah, there's demand out there, and there isn't an, enough supply yet, right? Like, maybe, you know, it's like not a lot of people out there who have this experience. And so you, you've got the experience, and, uh, and it's paying off for one of ours, uh, at least so far. We'll see how you if, you, if you follow through, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. I know that you're really interested in maybe just moving to Hawaii and waiting tables and surfing for a while, so you'll have to make that decision. Um, so Daniel's going to show us a little bit about Markdown. How many people uh, are familiar with Markdown, or you know how to do Markdown? Like a Just a little bit. bit. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I don't know. I guess it's kind of interesting. Like you hear about markup languages, <laughs> right? HTML, hypertext markup language, and this is Markdown. Why did they call it Markdown instead of Markup? Because it's just marking a document up, right? Yeah. They yeah. just for fun well, they call it Markdown, or is well, there a reason? I think most markup languages have both the beginning and ending tags, whereas uh. markdown just kind of has, like maybe a heading uh, front tag, if even that. Usually, and markdown's cooler. Like you yeah. down with this? Yeah, markdown's more human readable too. If you just open it in a text editor. All right, so let's see markdown. Thanks. So uh, markdown allows us to format text. You talk. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, markdown is a. Uh, Useful for uh, generating uh, HTML, which is what GitHub actually does for it. If your uh, GitHub repo has a file named readme.md, capital readme dot lowercase md, it will actually put this, the uh, generated, it'll actually generate HTML and put it at the bottom of your GitHub repo. Um, let's see, I've got an example, I'm pretty sure. Um, um, Here's one of my repos. So I've got little read, so readme.md here. Uh, it's this one. Yeah. Readme.md, and it just shows it as uh, values here. And that's just, that's all I did was I put this readme.md here in the top of the, of the GitHub repo. If you look at it raw, it's just a text file. Zoom in on that. See that? Yeah. Hey, Lori. Nice to see you. It's not foggy, you guys will turn. <laughs> it's not fog, it's smog, just yeah. to be precise. So uh, I put together a, a readme.md here, which is in the slides directory on uh, the drive if you want to look at it or grab it yourself, which just kind of shows off just about every uh, markdown syntax feature there is. So first off, single line is single line of text. That's pretty easy. Just don't have to, don't have to put anything special for just normal paragraphs. Um, Leave an empty line if you want to create a new paragraph. If you see, like right here, I got multiple lines here, but they're all put into a single line over here. You have to put an empty line in order for a new line to occur. Unless you're on GitHub. If you're on GitHub, it will actually break it, which is odd, but whatever. So GitHub breaks that rule, but normally you have to leave another an empty line. So, by the way, this is the Atom. Uh, Markdown preview comes with Adam, so I uh, believe WebStorm Scott uh, Markdown viewer as well. But Adam's made by GitHub, so it's got all the GitHub spe special features too. Can so, which is why I'm demonstrating on this. Now, some of the Markdown doesn't work on some parts of GitHub, correct? Like the readme. 
Um, the readme.md read uh, read can be just about any, nearly any size, and it just works in any particular folder. Um, ish, GitHub issues and forums and wiki and such do also support uh, Markdown as well. Um, if you start a line with, a, with your hashtag or pound or whatever you want to call it, it'll be a header. So you can see the text is really big here, and you, can you see there's a little line underneath it? Yeah. Yeah, I guess you can see. Um, so don't need an empty line there at all. So um, you can go from one to six different to six hashtags, and each one will get smaller. It's the same as the H1 through H6 uh, HTML tags. In fact, if I pull open the uh, if, I, if this was on GitHub or whatever and I pulled open the developer tools, I'm pretty sure it does use the H1 through H6. Um, there's no H7, no header 7. Oh, man. <laughs> um, if you start off with a greater than sign, it'll give you this little bar on the left for it being a quote. You can pull up into multiple lines if you want. Um, oh, that's cool. If you want or however you want. So if you want to quote someone or something, this is... What about if you get do two greater than? Do you get the double bar? No, I don't believe so. Like old school email? You oh, do! Oh, do. Cool. Oh. So, yeah, you can, okay, it looks like you can stack it. <laughs> two. Cool. So, quotes within quotes. I'm so easily impressed. <laughs> I'm so easily amused. Yeah, it's the one, right? <laughs> so, if you surround text with uh, asterisks or underscores, it'll be italic. Either one works. They uh, use both so you can mix and match as needed. Um, uh, so if you need an underscore and you need italics, you can use asterisks. If you need an asterisk in your text, you, you can use underscores for your italic stuff. So either one will work. They thought of everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> double, double asterisk or double underscore is bold. So uh, if you want a little emphasize, you put one. If you want to really emphasize, you can put two. I don't think you can put three. Bold, bold. Yeah, yeah, you can. Cool. So you can make a bold and italic with three. Italic. So, um, yeah, you can mix and match as you wish. So here I've got bold for the entire thing, and then italic for just the and. Cool. You can see that at all. Um. You can do an unordered list with just starting it off with a uh, asterisk, which with two spaces will let you nest it. So if you want your uh, your lists, night bullet point lists, it's just asterisk or dash, I believe. If you just do dash, so so yeah, as either asterisk space or dash space will give you an, your unordered list. And then uh, having two spaces before it will move, will indent it over by one. So not a tab, two spaces. Some, some things will let it, sometimes some things will not. So make sure you give yourself an empty line to end the list, because if you skip that empty line, it'll merge it up into that next thing over. Oh, the back ticks make it black in the background. Yep, yep. So uh, um, if you started off with a one period space, you'll give yourself a numbered list. You don't have to do the numbering yourself. You can just do one period for everything, or you can do three period, whatever. It'll it'll figure it out by itself. Um, nesting works too, and you can do mixed nesting even. So I've got this third level be the ask, be uh, unordered bullet point instead. Um, okay. So if you use backticks in the middle of a sentence, it'll give it um, monospace, which is good for showing off code. Because it can be nice and aligned. Um, it also disables all the rest of the markdown stuff. So you can see I've got this wrapped in uh, underscores over here. But it's not getting the italics because it's wrapped in the back ticks. So it's useful. Um, triple back ticks basically lets you go to, through multiple lines. Uh, so I've got the multiple lines here. And it works. I believe it also. Yeah, it's still one line here, even if I break it on new line. So, if you've got four spaces in front of your line, it'll go into this black box. 
and be monospace. So this is, if you really want your code, just put four spaces in front of it, and uh, good for demonstrating your code. Um, links. Links are a bit more, one of the more confusing one. A lot of these other ones are pretty intuitive almost. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> links, on the other hand, are not. So a link is performed by uh, wrapping the text you want to be made into a link in uh, square brackets. And then directly after that, putting the URL inside parentheses. So I've got Google is found here, the text here, and this will go to google.com. If you want to put an image in, it's the same thing as a link, except you put an exclamation point in front of it, and it will make you give you your image. So I grabbed the Google uh, Google image thing from their main web page, and I think it gets pulled into this page. All right. So GitHub specific. Anything, these these last little bits here are for GitHub only. They added it to Markdown for some extra stuff. So uh, double uh, curly thing here which is shift tilde, which is right next to the one key on most keyboards. If you uh, wrap it in dub two of those, it'll cr cross it out. So get a blast for mistakes, which is crossed out. Um, if you have your triple back ticks, like you do up here, uh, here, and the first thing in the big triple back ticks is a new line, it'll give you the black box too, so you don't have to indent all your code with four spaces all the time anymore. Um, if you put a programming language name as the first line, it'll actually give you syntax highlighted too. So, That's so, so my totally first cool. text here is go, and it gave me syntax highlighting on go. So if you want to stick that in your readme's, you can do so. So uh, it'll work for just about any language. So if I put Ruby highlighting, it doesn't know what a lot of this stuff is, but it still can recognize like this string. So where can we find your this is on the slides, or in the oh, slides folder. Slide? Well, it's, it's, on the, it's, it's in the slides folder. Readme.md's in there. So go to the syllabus, and then from the syllabus, you'll see a link for presentation slides. And It'll be there. Awesome. Yeah, so a nice little tutorial. Yep, yep. And then we can right, maybe create a short URL at the end of this video for anybody who's watching it online to get you to it. So if you use the pipe here, which is usually above the enter key on most keyboards. You can separate things and then put some dashes on the next line over with pipes again. And then you can put more text and that'll let you make a table. Um, the uh, colons here are optional. I can skip them. Um, works just fine. But the colons let you define whether you want your text to be left aligned, center aligned, or right aligned. So if you skip them, it'll go through with whatever the default is. But you can't really tell though on yours. Really yeah, they're, they're kind of small there. Um, so yeah, if I put a one, oops. One, two, three. There, you can see it a lot better now. Oh yeah, that works. So, so the colons will let you define, or you can skip it, and it will, I think, default to left. Interesting thing is it inherits from the column if it isn't specified. Three is right aligned. Yep, three is right aligned because it's coming from yeah. up here. Oh, I see. All right, got it. So, so it'll, also, it'll, any column that comes after that yeah. will remain in that particular. Yes. Until you do a new one. Yep, yep. Okay. So th this is to define to separate between the head and the uh, body. Yeah. Um, so you can see above the line there are a bold, but below the line is not. You can tr you can add extra spaces as you wish to try to align your pipes, uh, make them look make it all look uh, flattened. Uh, GitHub will ignore the extra spaces. So you can see the table still looks exactly the same. So that may be useful or may not be, depending on how you want to do it. And the last thing GitHub adds are checkboxes. <clears throat> Those are nice. Which I can actually click on and do stuff with. So that's just... Yeah, what is that little symbol in front of your checkbox on here? Oh, is that so, a... So over here, to, to put together a checkbox, okay. yeah, it's an asterisk, space, and then square brackets with a space in between it, or with an X between it. Do you need the asterisk and another to take space. it out? You do need the asterisk. All right. Yeah, just okay. That's cool. so, um, so yeah, you can check it and uncheck it. If you're on GitHub and you use the checkbox in the issues or the wiki, it will actually save it when you check the checkbox. 
So if you want to use like GitHub issues to put a to-do list for yourself, you don't then have to edit the markdown. You can just check the checkbox and it will save. Put an emote up there because you can do those. Things. And then yes, there are also emotes which I don't uh, think you can. You cannot do. I don't think you can do so with Adam's viewer thing. But uh, yeah, if you. Uh, but yeah, if you're on GitHub itself. I guess I'm logged in as Todd, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, just don't delete, delete any repos. Yeah, yeah. I'll just <laughs> I'll just cancel, create a fake Danger thing here. Area. So I believe uh, what was it? Colon. If you do yeah, colon. Colon and whatever. You copy. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of uh, <laughs> of emotes as well <laughs> that that, that all start with a colon. So uh, if you're on GitHub itself and you're doing editing on GitHub, it'll give you a nice list as you start typing. That's a good one. They could have said colon Java. That might have one. Nope. Oh. They got a Japan though. Do they? Yeah, hamster. Yes. That's one of my favorites. Japan, Japan, Japanese castle, Japanese goblin, Japanese ogre. <laughs> Korea. Just the flag. What's the thumb up? Where did that one go? Key. Plus plus one. Plus one. Yeah, one. So, easily. Yep, yep. so yeah, lots Easy of stuff for things. GitHub. So most of these things can be found on uh, on uh, just searching for GitHub Markdown. They've got uh, three different uh, or three or four different things. So Markdown, ba their Markdown Basics page has got generic Markdown that works everywhere, and then uh, GitHub flavored Markdown has their specific stuff that's different from normal stuff. And then I've, they've also got a writing on GitHub, which shows some extra stuff that are in issues. For example, uh, yeah, there's the task lists, but uh, um, where is oh, it? There it is. Emo emoji autocomplete. Yeah. yeah, if you are in a GitHub issue, you can put a pound sign and then the uh, git, the git um, text thing that it gives you, or no, git. No, pound sign and then a number of an issue. So let's say let's go back to uh, Todd's uh, Adam play Adam Go playground. So Todd's got a bunch of issues here, and each one of them's got a number. See so pound twelve, pound ten, pound eight. Um, in your Git, if you make a markdown thing and it uses a pound and one of those numbers, it'll create a link to that issue. So you can just click on it and go to the issue. Useful for referencing. And then also GitHub also has if your commit message is completed or fixed or et cetera, and then a pound number, it will automatically mark that particular issue as completed, which can be useful. And then I believe also if you do an at sign and then someone's GitHub username, it will give a link to that person. I believe it will also give them an email uh, to come look that they got mentioned. Well, I'm not sure. So yeah, there's GitHub stuff. Awesome. Markdown. Best Markdown presentation I've ever seen. <laughs> That's great, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. I think you've got a... That's a good uh, cheat sheet right there. Yeah. yeah. You've got a future of it as a teacher if you ever want to pursue it. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward. All right. Uh, so the link to that file, you want to go to that file. Um, I don't know if I've created a short link, but... I'll do it right here, fall, and then right there, and share that, and copy it. Anybody can view that, and short URL, and there's the link, Colson2, if you want to get to that. That's an interesting random generated number. That's Coulson, a pretty good one. Colson2. That's a pretty I, good one. I can one. remember that. I've watched the Avengers. <laughs> I have not. I don't know what that reference is, but I'm over 40, so. Uh, cool.